Welcome to Fox Sports Gold, where we take you inside some of Australia's greatest sporting achievements. In 2004, future rugby league immortal Andrew Johns was anything but. The Newcastle, New South Wales and Australian captain gone after just three rounds of the NRL season with an ongoing ACL injury. Now the surgery that followed kept Joey out of the game for more than 11 months. Returning to football in February of 2005, at the mature footy age of 30 and 10 months, it seemed that Joey's magnificent club and representative career was drawing to a close. For Johns, returning to club football would take all his will, with a return to representative football, a distant dream. It seems ironic that the footballer most feared by the Maroons for the past decade has indeed headed to Queensland in a bid to play in this year's Origin Series. It's just getting some power back in my leg and get some strength back and utmost getting the confidence in my head to, to play the way I should be. Come on, you knew that. Well done. Come on. I told you. I know. They're really flogging me up here. I think they enjoy the way they, they flog a New South Welsh and up here, but uh, yeah, I feel great within myself, really fit. No stranger to coming back from injury, he's set to blow out the cobwebs in a final trial against the Sharks. I was going to go in cold and not play a trial, but I spoke with a few people, spoke to my brother about it and spoke to the coach and um, he just thought it's best to get it out of my mind and, and have a little hit out before I go in. After missing last season's representative calendar, Johns has decided to delay his retirement from rep football. Yeah, I'd like to play one more year. If I played last year and would have played Origin football last year, that would have been it. But there's still a desire there to play. I'd like the chance to play under Ricky Stewart, but it all comes back on me. You know, my form's got to be good enough to be, to be picked. I can't be picked, picked on, on past performances. I've got to be in, in top form because there's so many great halfbacks. Johns was introduced into the game by coach Michael Hagan and immediately went looking for work. He was tentative, but after 11 months on the sideline, that was expected. I just found myself just feeling a bit lost. You know, when to, probably when to run and when to pass, when to kick. And now that'll just come at game time. So I just think it's going to take time. You know, I talk to people who have reconstructions, they say it takes a while to get out of your head. So um, just hopefully each game I can keep improving. Johns refused to quit on salvaging a win. A massive 40-20 put the Knights on the attack. From the corresponding scrum, though, a lack of match fitness took its toll. It's the last time in footy career. You know, I've got no answers. I don't know what's going on. It's not the lack of trying. It's just I don't lost for answers. We're just letting ourselves down. It's an embarrassment. One-on-one misses. It's just it's, it's under nine stuff. You can't connect with one-on-one play. Inside to Rapati. Andrew Johns is down and in a whole bunch of pain. Uh, he has a suspected uh, fractured jaw and uh, he'll be getting x-rays and surgery in the next 24 hours. Oh yeah, nasty hit. Andrew Johns walked out of hospital this afternoon following surgery last night to insert a steel plate in his jaw, vowing his latest injury is just a short-term setback. My spirits are still high. Uh, retirement never went, never went in my head. It's just a, a freakish accident that happened. He'll be able to train. Uh, probably won't be running till Monday, but uh, he'll certainly be in the gym. And he hasn't ruled out being back in time for Origin football. I mean, if he gets back and his rehab's good and, and he plays well, then you know he may be, well be playing for New South Wales um, at the back end of the series. Being down 1 0, we can't afford to go in with a guy that's under confidence. Sticky just wanted a bit of a ball work session. I've never been involved in a training session where I saw the tempo and the intensity rise so much because of one player. It was nice to get cheered instead of booed. <laughs> The morning after an amazing night, a North Queensland cattleman reads about a son's match-winning try. I just closed my eyes. I said, oh, I hope he didn't rub that ball. <laughs> Kamali had been centimetres from manufacturing a Blues victory, but in a moment of daring, Matt Bowen stole the ball and the game. Matt Bowen scores! They say one of those things that happen. 
have my day. I won't quite forget it. You little beauty. What do you reckon I was thinking? <laughs> I just wanted to go out there and kiss him, mate. That was that, that good. It was just a big play and it was awesome. He was pretty popular in the coach's box. Blues coach Ricky Stewart was one of the first to console Kamali. You know, I always say to my halfbacks that they own the result. And tonight he owned the wrong result. The players have been tremendous. Um, you know, the messages I got overnight and the phone calls this morning have all been really good. Really, really disappointed for Noddy. He doesn't deserve that. You know, he's a champion halfback. And... In golden point time, Queensland had pulled off a golden victory for the ages. 90 nil up to blow that, that would have been devastating for us. Instead, it was the Blues who were left gutted. Did Billy Slater knock on for the crucial first try? Uh, I didn't think it'd come off my hand at all. This was the stuff of heroes. I've got a taste for it now, so, you know, hopefully there's plenty more to come. Exhausted players, each with a story to tell and nothing to apologise for. Uh, that's origin, I suppose. The decision to leave drop Brett Kamali, yeah, you, you, you feel for him a bit because the whole, he pretty much he got blamed for the intercept. Brett kamali has been under pressure to retain his spot. You know, I think, um, you know, I've copped a fair bit of criticism. We don't really call it as, as dropped, he's, he's more or less been replaced. I think body language wise, as Ricky said, you know, I think he's a bit down in confidence. That's, that's the way we decided to go. It was a, we looked at our, uh, our kicking game and um, such an important part of Origin football. Is... I've got to play with Trent every week at club level and love playing with Baz and uh, I've got a very high opinion of Braith and Astor as well, so individually I was happy with the combination. We knew they were going to take the line on, so that was a, a focus for us coming into the game. <laughs> We went to Dubbo. From memory, Trent had a problem with his quad. With scans indicating he wouldn't make it through a full game next Wednesday, he ruled himself out. Walked up into the sheds and Sticky got us in the room and said Baz is out and we're going to bring Andrew Johns in. And... It was a logical choice, so I thought, uh, done it before, great player. I remember uh, being steely faced at the time because you know, I'm a man in a, in a state of origin team, so there was no emotion on my face, but inside, I've just heard that I'm going to get a game with Andrew Johns, and I was like this, I was so <laughs> excited. It really feels like, um, I suppose I'm starting over again. That's the, the feeling in my stomach, so. When I got him to training, um, which was at Wallara Oval, East Rugby Union Oval, where we did our first ball session, which was the next day, Sticky just wanted it a little bit upbeat, bit of a ball work session, get Joey used to the calls. A lot of, there was a lot of fanfare over it. Joey coming back into the squad only after playing one game. There was this air of excitement, obviously, because Joey was coming in and he was the player he was. And straight away you could tell, when we went down to train for the first time with him, you could tell it was a different feel at training. Joey being the person he is, he was jumping out of his skin to get in there. I've never been involved in a training session where I saw the tempo, and the intensity rise so much because of one player. He lifted the whole session and he lifted individual performance at just a training session. He, to be honest with you, scared the crap out of me. If you weren't in the right spot, he'd let you know. For, for me, there was the confidence. Um, you've got the, the game's greatest player just walked into the room. Um, you know he's gonna be steering the team around. Still to this day, I think that ball work session was one of the best sessions I've ever been involved with. And Joey just ran it like clockwork. You know, or he gave people confidence around him. He's two plays ahead of everyone else. I don't want it to be about me and about fairy tales or anything like that. Just come here to do a job and to have a win. I think we all looked at each other after that session and thought, we're, we're a big chance here. It's weird, he's, um, he's a teammate of mine and I'm in awe of him and I, I didn't want to feel like that. I wanted to feel like I could walk up to him and I don't know, punch him in the arm or do something to his food when he's eating food, you know, because that's what mates do, but there was no way I, was, I, I, um, I got to that stage. This is Andrew Johns we're talking about, you know, and... His inclusion in Origin has really made um, Game 2 uh, pretty exciting and, you know, I probably thought he should have been there in the first place, really. You just got to be on your toes, you know, whenever he's got the ball in his hands. So, you know, it's a challenge for all of us. And we weren't too focused on the fact that he hadn't played too much football. Uh, he's, he's a, he was the best in the world at the time, and uh, he, we knew that he was going to be uh, their go to man in, in the in attack. I think we've got uh, now two outstanding teams with a very big result at the end of this match. I'm very bored of the web, in, uh, the web uh, speculation, and I'm very bored with the refereeing. So I'd like to thank you for your attention here today. Cut. Can we ask you questions, Rick? Oh, signal negativity.
You know, we're playing, we're playing in a game of football that is the, the biggest and best game on our calendar. And all there was was negativity around the, uh, the game and uh, I was over it. Um, but you get to the back end of the week in regards to Origin. I try and do as much moody as, or, moody as I can, or I try to do as much as I can over the last two years I coached um, for the pan people out there, the, the fans of the game. But uh, you know, I probably had one of those moods that day, I suppose. The city of Sydney is a distinct shade of blue tonight from the Opera House to a sold out Telstra Stadium and far beyond. I was a little bit relaxed, more relaxed going into game two. Um, to a certain extent, um, Ricky, Ricky. Obviously, there was a lot of pressure on the coach as well. Um, the buck sort of stops with the coach. As Darren Lockyer leads the Queenslanders out. Yeah, it was nice to get cheered instead of booed. <laughs> this will be a thunderous roar for the Blues. He shouldn't be there in his limited preparation. Others say he had to be there. He gave me the confidence that I could do more with my game just because he was out there. And that's the type of player he was. But they say, cometh the hour, cometh the man. And it's not just about Andrew Johns, it's about the quality of the player that's playing with him. He lifts them, but they've got to have the ability to lift to that level. There's the whistle. Origin 2 is underway. Queensland with first use of the ball and seven receiver comes back at Hindmarsh. Well, they're looking very dangerous, but everything they're throwing at Queensland, Queensland's defence, just terrific. Uh, Joey was about 40, 50 metres out. Tackle five is there. They're just into Queensland's territory now. Here's Johns putting a kick in. He hooked it back because he saw a bit of vacant gap there towards the left post. And Mini being Mini, just absolutely sprinted his guts out. Minicello's chasing, the ball is hitting the upright of the try! It's a try for the blue! Scored by Minicello! That's his fifth origin, origin try! Joey was probably the first bloke to do, you know, bring back those, or start with those banana kicks back to the middle of the field, off the outside or the inside of the boot. He's got that knack of getting it right on go one. Uh, the fullbacks and the halfbacks have a Sixth sense, they know what's going to happen. On tackle five, 12 out, they keep the pot boiling. Here's Smith with a little kick. Oh, the bounce was horrible for Minicello, but King, again, he's proved a bit of a saviour. Yes, I remember at that period, um, those kicks were really popular. There's the kick from Lockyer on the final tackle. Steps on the mill, held up by the ball down, Queensland try. I think it's Brad Thorne. It is. It turned the shape of the first half, really, that try. The biggest player on the field, he left for that one. That was one of those tries where you're disappointed that you let in. Brad Thorne, he's, he's seven foot tall, he's 110 kilos and he's, he knows how to catch. It's come up trumps for him. How are you going to out jump that man? Well, he's a monster. We considered that one a lucky try and it didn't really get us down too much. Now, they come this side. Johns comes to the right for a Nasta and Minicello knocks on. Here's Billy Slater. Bill, off the mark, is one of the most electrifying players I've ever seen, but yeah, when he's in open space, he's, he's like a racehorse coming down the home straight. He, uh, he really moves, he puts his head back, and you see all the veins bulging in his neck, he, he's trying that hard. Slater racing away inside the 10 metres, and Queensland again, off an interceptor, able to score. Obviously saw that a fair bit at training. Uh, the Storm, Billy running 100 metres, always in front of me, because he was quicker than me. Yeah, it can't state of origin change on a whim. Ricky's so emotional. He can be good at a spray, but a lot of the times it's constructive. Um, them sprays are a bit more general, um, showing emotion, you know, hating the world or whatever it may be at different moments throughout the game. All, all Ricky wants is the effort. If the effort's there, then Ricky will never question you. As Lockyer takes us into the second half. Uh, I remember his kicking game. Was outstanding. 40 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, it's there! Oh. Never seen a halfback touch the ball so often in a set of six. Every, every play he wanted the ball. And if he wasn't passing the ball, he was taking the line on. And if he wasn't doing that, he was kicking the ball. He, oh, it was a privilege, mate. I was, I was sitting out in the wing 
taking notes. <laughs> he was that good. I've never seen a more dominant halfback in my time. As it goes away for Johns again, and away it goes to Anesta. Gets it away, surely! Yes, it's a try! Uh, you start creating field position, you start getting momentum, you start getting confidence. Points can come quickly, especially when you've got that class of player. Wing getting up gingerly, it's gone away for the boot of Johns, and he decides to test the air. Obviously, I've never played fullback against Joey, but I would hate to be a fullback. High it goes, up they go. That's zero! Six more tackles ruled. Positional change there with the Blues. Steve Menzies now playing at right, at right centre. If there was ever one guy that could make the most of opportunities and capitalise on it, it was that man, Steve Menzies. Guderas low for Johns, wide for Wing, left foot, right foot. Menzies will score! So when we were eight clear up, I thought things were travelling along pretty nicely for us. And the kick on its way, I think he's got it again, yes, the flags are up again! Yeah, once again we had, um, we saw we had a lot of space down the left. King, a long pass, and Nasta not going anywhere, Johns, he rifles the ball away. You know, I, I got put in some space. And, and it's gone from Cooper and gone to Gessia. I was even thinking about taking him on there for a while and then and saw Coops inside and threw it inside. He passes! He's away, Cooper! The Dragons have done it! The Dragons set a combination! John's again! John's is dominating! 14, up by 14 with 20 minutes to go. You know, it's, it's origin footy. It comes away from first and gone to lock here. Short ball! Unfortunately, it felt like deja vu all over again. It reminded us of the intercept, game one. But Joey's leadership, you know, it's just another strength to his boat. And Braith plays the ball. Badiris goes to Johns. Off his right foot, try. Badiris has scored his second Origin try in as many games. Origin wasn't one I lost in the first 50, 60, 70, even 75 minutes. It was going to be one I lost in the 80th minute. Yeah, that'll do it for you. The maestro is struck again. Joey Badiris combination, which at the time uh, was the best combination in the comp by a country mile. And haven't you enjoyed the show tonight from your son? Unbelievable, eh? More than we expected. We thought he'd play well, but I didn't think he'd play this well. There it is. And that is the end of it. Origin 2 is over. To be square at game two, we are very excited, very happy. and. Uh, but we knew we still had one, one game to go and we're going back to Queensland and we had, we'd have the whole whole state behind us. We've seen you play some good ones, but that was something else. Yeah, uh, things just seem to fall into place, but, uh, you know, R Ricky R leaves no stone unturned and we followed the game plan and it really worked. More to come, big fella. Right, the job's not over, we've got one more game to go. With just one club match under his belt after recovering from a badly broken jaw, thanks to Jerome Rapati, Andrew Johns had engineered one of the most dominant displays ever by an Origin team in Game 2 of the 2005 series. Now the Blues must head to Suncorp Stadium for the decider, the 12th in Origin history. After a loss in Game 1 at the Cauldron, the Blues knew the Maroons would throw everything at them to win. The Queenslanders' pride and passion was never in doubt, but Johns and his men could not prepare for the ferocity and relentlessness of the attack. in the cider. It's all or nothing. You've got to be prepared to win without the luck. In a the decider, there's no second prize. A reception like that, negative, is the word. It's, uh, it's, ama it's an amazing sensation to run out and just have every, just about every person in the crowd cheering for you. It's, uh, it's an amazing atmosphere and, and uh, I think the best ground to play at. Blues ball, first use. 
hit hard by Queensland. Every training session we had leading into that game, we'd have oh, 10 minutes um, of defense, of goal line defense. So whether it be at the start of a session or the end of a session, we always practice our goal line D. Debut player, lock out, puts a kick in, he was pulled back. There might be a penalty here. Simpkins says play on. Advantage Queensland. Um, funnily enough, we got faced with it in that first 10 minutes. The uh, strongest defensive performance I've ever been involved in as a coach or a player. Little kick. They nearly got a regather. This will be Queensland's ball. Six more tackles. From memory, I think it was about nine minutes we didn't have the football outside the first set of six, all within our own 30. Unbelievable pressure to start this game. I was screaming and screaming and screaming to Mark Gasner and Simon, and he couldn't hear me. The crowd was going, um, they, were, they were going bananas. Everything we spoke about in that week got tested within the first six sets of football. Kicks to the right wing for Singh. Ball is bouncing around. Line drop out. What pressure. Danny Madeira's blowing up. I still use it today. With football teams that I coach, with juniors that I've coached, I show that nine minutes of football where we just hung and hung and hung. Movement. Round roars. They're 15 away again. First in. Another opportunity arose, someone else was there in cover and our forwards were absolutely outstanding. Surely they must score the Maroon. Luckier again, Carroll again. But we just kept turning away, turning away. Payne Marsh throws himself at him. Every set we turned away, we grew in confidence. Great tackle. Five tackles gone again. And we knew if we'd hold him out, we'd be at the other end soon enough. Smith for Lockyer. He's so busy. Now Mimicello. He ran 70 or 80 metres down the field, got caught, got tackled, they were offside, we got a penalty. When you think with the pressure they've been under, they would take a kick for goal simply to get some oxygen back in the tanks. All of a sudden we had the ball twice, the second time we had it was a penalty, we kicked a goal with 2 0 up. Flags up, first points in the game. When you're coaching a team that goes through so many sets of six in defence early in the game without conceding a try, you know one thing, you know your team's on the money. I'll never ever see another piece of football like that in regards to exemplifying what Origin's about. It's gone over to Bailey. Bailey comes to Seven Asiva. Seven Asiva went in hard. Oh. Bailey got some more yards though. I was actually trying to get in dummy half the play before and Betsy said, get out of it. So I've just run around and really didn't know what I was doing. So I've just grabbed the ball, gone for a run. 15 out from the Queensland line. Heinmarsh to the centre of the ground. A fend and then a crawl. Look at him go along no. on the knees. Um, thought I was through, <laughs> thought I was through, but... Origin football having to be the best under the tee. Your next effort's got to be the best effort. We've managed to get a quick play of the ball. It takes him to three metres from the line. And Joey's just a bullet pass. And Braces hit a, hit a hole. Johns is dangerous, and Esther's over! Ladies and gentlemen, there is the first try! The, the ball Joey threw was, was perfection. You know, he, he held up there to those inside defenders and then turned out and hit Braith on a lovely ball. Well, we knew we could come back from deficits. Now it's the same attitude. We've got to go on with this. You know, we, we, we had to learn to put our foot on their throat. Back then, a lot of the guys would always kick and target the winger, and the wingers would do so much practice at catching the kicks and were generally pretty good. So what we wanted to do is, was to put it on the 5'8 or halfback's head. Joey said, give me both options and I'll pick the right one. And Johns chances the kick. There's plenty of chases. They've got a try out of it. There's a try for Gasnia. And it paid off. You know, Gaz has climbed above everyone else and um, spun in the air and he's managed to come down with it. We've, we've gone over again. It's so, such a good feeling when things come off that you practice for in the match. Menzies the dummy half waiting. John now off his right foot a couple of times, takes the tackle. Minicello, here is King and Matthew King has gone in. I put the ball down like a six-year-old does really. New South Wales have scored another try. I couldn't believe I just scored a try. It was, uh, yeah, it was unbelievable. Kennedy goes down. High tackle by Crocker. They become a little bit restless. 
Like 18 nil at half time, we were confident. You know, even if we were only up 10 nil at half time, we were confident we were going to win that match. I was going in there very proud. I was going in there very excited. The next 40 minutes was going to win the game, not the first 40 minutes. I'm a bit of a pessimist. It can happen. We can get beaten. This is another vivid thing I remember from, uh, from Sticky. He said, boys, whoever scores the first try in the second half, I don't want you to celebrate. Johns goes back to the blind side. King will score! And King scores his second try of the night. Funnily enough, it was me who scored that try. <laughs> New South Wales have gone further in front. Mate, I wanted to rip me jumper off like a soccer player and run into the crowd swinging it around like that, but... If you watch the footage, you can actually see I throw the ball up behind me and then I actually calm down really quickly because I heard what Sticky had said. Great Queensland origin sides had big backs. Same with New South Wales. Here's a chance. Bowen has lost it. Picked up by John. Give it away to Ryan. Ryan gets it away. Hainlash gets it on. Cooper. Cooper gets it on. The winger will score. Tahoe. It's party time. <laughs> Find out that, that try. And oh, gee, Daddy, no. Again, playing outside Mark Gaznia, um, I recommend it. <laughs> Going to Johns, Johns to Menzies, Menzies, Cow Gaznia, try, try, try! Uh, life didn't get much better than that at that moment. He has scored at the 31st, the 47th, and the 64th minute. Once I get to sort of that many, it, it, uh, it's interesting how quiet things go behind the post. You know, you don't, you don't really know what to say. You sort of all bewildered at the score and, you know, Lockie talks and we know we've just got to focus on the next set of defence. There's hours and hours and hours of preparation that goes into that and you look back and you think, wow, you know, it's, uh, it's all worth it. It's a record win for the Blues in Brisbane. Andrew, what about this mission accomplished for New South Wales? Yeah, great feeling. Just enjoy being back out here. It's, it's, it's what footy's all about. And uh, I'd like to thank everyone for letting me be involved. Honestly, any nerves before this one tonight, being a decider? I was a bit nervous, mate, uh, but uh, just knew we'd done the work and really confident in Ricky's game plan. Really, I, I, when I get happy about a result, I'm overjoyed and excited. It's for the players. You know, I, I'm, I coach for my players and I coach to win. But I'm hugging Andrew Johns in the middle of Suncorp Stadium after winning an Origin Series. Life doesn't get sweeter than that. It is one of the best moments of my career. You know, I was fortunate enough to win a few Origin Series, but that one in particular, an amazing feeling and one that I'll never forget. And the best thing about that game, I remember, is walking around, carrying the shield, pointing it at the crowd. You couldn't wipe the grin off my face. It was a great feeling to, to wrap up a series up there. And they rattled off the, I think there was only five people previously who scored hat-tricks and some great names there for my name to then go up against, uh, alongside those guys, again, blew me away. And... Mate, two years ago I was um, living on a, living in the lounge room floor of uh, Mick Sullivan's place, you know, so, mate, it's a massive turnaround, it's something, you know, I feel really blessed and it's something that I, um, you know, I definitely don't take for granted. It's not just about the player on the field, in most cases Origin is a family affair. The winner of this award, Matty King. Yeah. Uh, and for me to receive is the first ever Brad Fittler medal. And I, I don't know how I won it. <laughs> I don't know if I should have won it, but I'm never ever going to be able to thank rugby league for, for those moments for me and my family. And my mum still um, gets goosebumps when she uh, sees a highlight or thinks of that time. It, you know, at that time there was a lot of talk in New South Wales that Origin was dead and uh, you know, Queensland were never going to win again. So that, I think that inspired Queensland to make some changes and make, make sure they had the right people in. And... Uh, from a coaching point of view, um, I'd love to do it all again. And I'm still young enough. This has been a production of Fox Sports.